Doesn't it seem odd to you that the people that say they believe in this big God who can do signs, wonders, and miracles, isn't it odd that as big as he is, he hasn't been big enough for many people of faith to not be in debt, not be broke, not be able to take care of themselves and their loved ones. In this video, we're gonna talk about it. Why do the people of God struggle with finances? Is wealth actually a bad thing? And does it compromise our salvation? And if God really owns the earth and the fullness thereof, why don't his children have that inheritance as well? We're gonna talk about it in this video. And if you stay to the end, I'm gonna show you some things that maybe you didn't know before. Let's get into it's it. It's your favorite Dr. Honey, Dr. Faith Abraham. Welcome back to the channel, the channel where we get your mind right, your money right, and your spirit right. In this video, we're gonna talk about why the people of God are not having the wealth and the success that we're meant to have. And right off the rip, I can tell you, there's this thing that is religion versus relationship. Religion tells us that wealth, riches, abundance is a bad thing. Relationship tells us a completely different story. My question to you today is what are you believing? What do you deem to be true? Because whatever is in your heart, as a man thinks in his heart, so he is. If you see yourself as broke, if you see yourself as less than, if you see yourself as struggling, if you see yourself as in debt, depressed and discontented like the men who were in the cave with David, then that is what you're going to see in your life. One of the things that I've done on my channel is I've dedicated many videos to abundance, to mindset, because I know that all of this starts within our belief system. Religion has told us that we should stay away and the people of God shouldn't have. But then that doesn't make sense when the scripture says that the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof, that we are the children of God. And as children of God, we get an inheritance from our father. The word tells us that a, per that a, a man is worse than an infidel if he does not leave an inheritance for his children. So why wouldn't God leave an inheritance for his children? Why would he leave our wealth, our abundance, our prosperity to chance? Now, understand this. When we look at the word, even in the beginning, we see that Abraham was called a friend of God and he was called wealthy. Solomon asked God for wisdom and God said, you didn't ask me for wealth. You didn't ask me for prosperity. You asked me for wisdom. But not only am I gonna give you wisdom, I'm gonna give you what you didn't ask for as well. And now Solomon is known as the wealthiest man that ever lived. There was even people who were coming to Solomon, like the Queen of Sheba, for example, who heard stories about how great this guy was. And not great because of his attitude or his demeanor. I'm sure he was a handsome looking guy, but the thing that drew her was how he ran the kingdom. And as he showed her, this is what we do. This is how this goes. This is how that goes. This is what happens here. Not only did she give gifts, but she was blown away by the order, the structure, the wisdom that Solomon used to run his kingdom. What am I saying to you? First things first is we have to understand that if a child of God is not seeing the wealth, the abundance, the prosperity, the good success as promised in Joshua 1.8, there's a couple of things that are off. First and foremost, Joshua 1.8 tells us that you will make your way prosperous and you will have good success if you make sure to meditate on the word day and night and be sure to observe all that is within it. We got to observe. We got to be faithful to the word. And when we're faithful, to the word and we humble ourselves knowing that we are children of God. We are kings and priests unto him. However, we still lay our crowns down for the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. We can see that wealth, abundance and prosperity will come to us. Good success will come to us. Number two, there may be some things that have happened in the past that was before us our parents, 
our grandparents, our great grandparents that they engaged in or did that was not right in the eyes of God. And now because of the works of our ancestors, we may be having to pay for it. This is what we saw when Elisha was dealing with the woman who said, hey, my husband is dead, one of your prophets. So that means that he was a prophet, but he's dead now, but he had debt. Now they're coming to get my son so that my son's life will pay for the debts of his father. Some debts in the spirit don't just go away. They are on the head of the next generation. In that situation, the prophet told her, I tell you what, use what you have, get your jars and put oil in them. And guess what? She borrowed jars. She used the jars she had, but then she also went forward and borrowed jars and put oil and oil and oil and oil and oil until they ran out of jars. And he said, okay, go sell that and then live off the rest. What happened? She was able to pay the debt that her son's life would have had to pay for because of the father. Some debts don't go away. They have a payment. And so sometimes people of God are suffering financially because of debts, sins, iniquities, abominations, of the past that now their life is having to pay for. And that's why you need the blood. You have to apply the blood to your finances. The third thing is mindset. Our minds have been preset towards lack, not having enough, only having enough. If I have wealth, then another person can't have wealth. Says who? Those are limiting beliefs and money blocks that we've been fed our whole life. If you really wanna pay attention to it, a lot of the things in the relationship that you have with money right now is not a relationship of choice. It's a relationship acquired from those who you learned from. But you are grown now and you have the option to, to choose and be intentional about the relationship that you have with money. Fourth thing is money itself. Many people have felt like, Oh, it's a spirit. And that spirit is a spirit you don't want to have communication with. But I question you in that. If it is a spirit and you are a child of the most high, is not that spirit under your foot? That spirit is meant to serve you. Money is a terrible master, but you are to be a master over it. But you can't master the thing that you won't confront. You can't conquer the thing that you won't confront, it's not going to happen. When we think of certain scriptures, oh, it's easier for a rich person to go through the eye of a needle than for them to get to heaven. Why? Because that person, not because they have riches, but because their heart is in the riches. Money never does anything but what is in the spirit of the person's hand that holds it. Money is a reflection of who you really are. How you are when you don't have money how you, is how you are when you have money. And so a lot of videos that I have on this channel are dedicated to breaking limiting beliefs, breaking money blocks, because I believe the people of God should be equipped. I believe the people of God should be the lenders and not the borrowers, the head and not the tail, above and not beneath. We should owe no man nothing but to love. And if you've been exposed to preaching, to teaching, to experiences and circumstances that have caused your mind to shrink in its ability and capacity, it's time to blow it up. It's time to increase in your capacity because the kingdom of God is not going to grow just by prayer, just by declaration. It's going to grow by prosperity. Even the Bible says that God will expand the cities. God will expand his reach through prosperity. We are meant to prosper. We are meant to have more than enough. 
Now, here's the last thing I want to leave with you today is another example of someone who was prosperous, even though he struggled a lot in his life. And that was Jacob. Jacob was under Laban's rule, his dictatorship, his lies for many, many years. But then he had a dream. And in that dream, God showed him something about the flock that he was tending to. Fast forward, and Jacob said, you know what? I'm going to take all of this flock from you that's spotted, that's speckled. Laban didn't see any reason to withhold it from him because to him, it meant nothing. But because of that dream and because of what God had done in Jacob's life, those things that Laban disregarded actually became what made Jacob very wealthy. What you need to be wealthy, you already have it. If you're not seeing it, rewind this video, go back to those points that I just shared with you and come back here to this point. You have to use what's in your hand. Tap into the wisdom of God. He will show you exactly what you have. I have a video, I'll tag it up here, where I talk about digital products and how it's the new wave of wealth and how people who are getting in on digital products now will enjoy the wealth transfer that is taking place. Now, if you want to call it a scam, if you want to call it um, baloney or whatever you want to call it, that's fine. I'm not here to argue with you, but there will be people who take advantage of it. And if you are willing to be one of those people and put the work behind your face, you are going to see the wealth that is promised you, that is meant for you, the good success that belongs to you. So what are you going to do about it? Begin to pray. Ask God if there's anything that you know of or you don't know of, and maybe you just don't want to acknowledge it, that is standing in your way, that is blocking your finances, that's hindering what belongs to you. There's so many things that have been given to us because we love God, because we have accepted him. And we don't experience it, not because he's double-minded, but rather because we haven't done the work. The Bible says that there are things that are hidden by God, but a king seeks those hidden things out. Be a king. If you're a male, if you're a female, it doesn't matter. Be a king today. Search it out and position yourself for the position of prosperity that you deserve, that's already on you, that needs the opportunity to be expressed. If you like this video, smash the thumbs up button, make sure you subscribe, and I'm going to see you in the next video that I have preloaded up for you. This is a good one.